Great to be here, though. Uh, yes. Really quick, let's just uh, jump through, do the intros, and we'll just get started. The summer scuffle officially underway. And if my slides will move forward, is it... Uh, mm, still see up. Oh, there we go. Okay. We're good. For those that don't know me, Christian Buckley, founder and CEO of Collab Talk. We are Collab Talk is an independent research and technical marketing services firm. So I provide fractional CMO services for uh, predominantly Microsoft ecosystem partners like uh, ISVs and SIs. So some of my clients like uh, uh, Extranet User Manager and Tigraph and a few others. So been in the space for many years. I'm a, a MVP and also Microsoft Regional Director based out of Lehigh, Utah. And there's my details there. Of course, all the recordings, all this stuff is all out on YouTube. If you've not yet subscribed to YouTube, please, please do. do. Please do. <laughs> and Talk. I am a software engineer at Camby Health Solutions, which is uh, kind of an umbrella organization, uh, health insurance offerings in the Pacific Northwest. I actually live in Minneapolis, Minnesota now. And so I work remote. And... Um, I'm not selling anything. I don't work for a company that sells anything in the technical realm. Uh, I just work mostly on the SharePoint and Office 365 side, started doing these tips internally. There was some demand to see them outside the company, and thus, OneMinuteOfficeMagic.com was born. And when just, or when... Needs to be theme music there. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. Yeah. When Christian saw that, he's like, how did I not know about this? We need to team up. And this is the result of that, which we have a lot of fun doing these. It's things. great when this stuff works out. And I'm sure there's others. We just have to, uh, maybe we have some guest hosts and, and we do, uh, you know, head to head to head. Oh, that something. would be cool. It would be fun to mix that up. Yeah. Uh, but the, if you've not participated in one of these before, they're pretty straightforward. We've created this little fun for, rather than just us get on and just, just talk about the, the, the tips in 30 minutes, we thought we'd make it this little kind of competitive thing. But the idea is that we're, uh, we're going head to head. We, we don't know what the other person is going to share. We are each going to share five across five rounds. So 10 total tips here. The, uh, the goal is no duplicates. And, ever. Uh, ever. So if I present uh, something and it just happens to be Tom's next tip or it's further down his deck, then we have to swap it out. Uh, so no duplicates. Uh, and I, if he tries yeah. to slip in a, a tip that he did once before, I throw the red challenge flag and I automatically win that round. You know, technically, Tom, since you brought that up, each of us has done that. Now that I have all the records in place, Darn. each of us has done that once. <laughs> just FYI. So, okay. Okay. Um, no hitting That'd below be the so belt. Sorry. Although you just tried, I just I, I I absorbed that that blow. So I'm short. I have to hit below the belt. It's <laughs> as high up as I can reach. And then we do we we do check the stats. We keep all that stuff, and we pick a winner at the end. It's decided there. And just very quickly, the current leaderboard. Huh. Uh, hmm. So we do keep track of rounds one, events one, overall votes, uh, most votes in a single event, and then I, the only the only one of us to have uh, only one out of two. That's fifty percent there, Tom. Did you know that? Uh, you, you know, I, I think those last two categories are a little <laughs> self-serving yeah. there, my friend. Well, the, the reason I, cre I added those two for those that have been watching multiple of these is because Tom had the, the most rounds, events, and overall votes. And I had, you know, but then I, I, I came in, we tied up in one of them, but I had that high score in, in a single event and then uh, that clean sweep in that same event. So I just threw it in there to tweak Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Fake news. Let's just move on. Yeah, I do have my, my sound effects. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Oh, and when we presented live at SharePoint uh, conference last month, we had to keep our tips under two minutes each in order to finish on time. That was a lot so we had an air horn button such as that we would fire if the other person went long. So we had a lot of fun with that. I have Correct. that turned off. You will not hear that. Oh, well, I, I, I might do, do some things out there. Like if I, if I crack a joke, then you might hear the, all right. Uh, it's real light, real faint there, but yeah, let's go with it. All right, so we're going to jump into it. We're going to switch back and forth, but I'll kick things off. 
Uh, this is one that um, if you're using Office 365, uh, you've probably seen this uh, rolled in to most environments. So this is the uh, insights capability uh, inside of Outlook. And so what this is, um, there's, it's, it's part of the expansion of the personal analytics and a lot of the AI-based capabilities. So where most of us saw this starting to roll out, as you, you're probably aware of this, is that uh, Outlook, suddenly you get these emails, um, like with Cortana, saying, hey, you had these conversations, or you had these emails, uh, and it looks like there are tasks, or these, thing, these things that you need to follow up on. That's all part of this broader insights initiative. But specifically within Outlook now is you have this insights with that little, uh, the, the little graphic there as, a, as an add-in that you can go in and, and what it does, and you see the animation there, um, is that it opens up this, you know, the first time, um, it, it's, the idea is to help you get more organized and to make sure that you're setting up time for yourself to go in and, and focus on those things that need more of your attention. So here's two options for me, setting this up. It says, hey, do you want to make it so that you're just highlighting important people and specific tasks that are happening um, coming through these primary channels, which is great if you have a project manager or your direct manager that you want to make sure that time is set up for any of the tasks or conversations that are coming, going back and forth between that key person. Uh, but the other side of it is just this book time to focus. And this is where it's, it, I'm sure it happens to all of us. So I, I use a Calendly app for external people to book time with me. And but the, what I find is if I don't go and block time in advance on my calendar, what happens? People schedule meetings right and left. And then I don't have time uh, to get actual work done. I often joke that, hey, it's 5 p.m. I finished with my last meeting. Now I can actually start working. <laughs> And, and I jokingly say that, but there's pain in my voice when I say it because it's, <laughs> it's always true. Um, so you have the ability to go in there and look at the, it suggests based on availability around these different tasks and you can book all or some of them, it, you know, add or expand them or, you know, or make them shorter time periods, add them all to your calendar to make sure that you have set aside time to focus on those things that are important. That's pretty nice. It's cool. It's out there. It's live right now. So if you're on 365, you should have it. Definitely check it out. Uh, I, <clears throat> I wrote a tip on this one some time back. And uh, yeah, it's really cool because you can, I, I like how to what it'll go through and say, hey, it looks like you may have tasks related to this email. And it goes through and says, uh, you know, you said, I'll make sure that gets done by Tuesday. Do you want to turn this into a task? I'm like, sure. You know, so that's, that's really a good thing. And I will tell you, Christian, I'm really glad I did six tips this time because you did swipe one of mine. Woohoo! I think that's the first time. It is. It is the first time that you have caused me to have to go to my backup slide. And I will be sure to go in before we publish the slides. Tom, I'll grab the link to yours and put this in on slide as well. So that's great. Cool. That's good to know. So good stuff there. All right. Over to you. And my tip is the announcements post in Teams. Uh, this is something that just recently went out to clients. I think it's completely rolled out now. But if you have your Microsoft, if you use Microsoft Teams and use Microsoft Teams client, this is a really good way to get um, postings in your chats to have a little bit more pizzazz and impact so you don't get lost within you know, really busy channels when people are just doing one-line textures going out there. So what happens if you're in a you know, discussion channel, which is what you see, start a normal conversation type at sign to mention somebody, Click on the little um, formatting icon, paintbrush icon, down in the lower left corner. And when you do that, now what you see is this drop down in the upper left corner, which says new conversation, which is the stuff you've always seen. Or you can click on announcement. And when you click on announcement, and it allows me to go to the next slide, you get this kind of a format where you have a headline, a subheading, and then you can type your announcement information. So 
in this case, if I want to put a headline out there, I can go ahead and just click on type a headline, and you'll see that I have two controls in the lower right corner. One is to change the color, so by default, I'm going to get this light periwinkle blue, whatever you want to call it, or I can actually put an image there. And if I put an image, I'm allowed to go and upload an image. It gives me a suggestion that you know 18 or 918 by 120 will be good because it's going to be landscape in nature. And when it brings in this image, it allows you to scroll the image up and down to change the focus, as well as allowing you to um, increase the zoom on it. So if there's something like right in the middle of the photo and you want that to take up most of the space, you can zoom in on that and make sure that you go up or down to get this centering in the middle of what you want it to be. Once you're done, go ahead and click the done button. It now gives you this really nice posting here. And then what you can do <clears throat> is using the rich text formatting ribbon under the announcements up in the upper left corner, you can do bolding, italicize, change your font colors, all that kind of stuff. Once you get everything looking like you want it to, you click the send icon in the lower right side. And now this is what your post looks like in your uh, chat channel. Uh, much more visually arresting, that isn't gonna get ignored. Uh, so that's a really good thing if you wanna tell everybody, hey, there's donuts in the, the break room. <laughs> you know, you can, you can put the donuts image in the background, say, hey, donuts are here. You know, do all sorts of wonderful things in the image here. But I will just say, don't start using announcements post for everything that you've got, because if you do that, people are going to start to just glaze over. That doesn't have anything to do with the donuts post I just made. Yes, yes it does. <laughs> okay, it does then. Uh, people are just going to glaze over, and they're going to start ignoring the announcements. So this is something that's really good if you have something that's announcements related, but just don't overuse it for everything that you do. That truly is a jelly-filled tip there. Tom. So also oh. not, not, uh, not donut related, just, yeah. just in general. That's a common term, <laughs> <laughs> but I've got the, uh, the, the poll question out there. Um, uh, so, you know, the, about who won the, the, the round. Um, I see the bias starting already, but uh, all right. Yay! I love bias. <laughs> bias is wonderful. Uh, but it's uh, yeah, I mean, both of these, I, you know, that is a, uh, it's a, much needed uh, tool that they that they went and added. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff that's that's coming, um, and and so uh, you know between uh, Teams, SharePoint, and Yammer, there's just so much uh, news that came out last last month at the uh, SharePoint conference. Yeah, Teams um, has been doing some phenomenal great. stuff lately. All right, so we're at uh, a, clearly a 60-40 split there with Tom uh, winning that one. So I'm going to wrap up the poll there. Five. I love you four. all. <laughs> we leave it open for one minute and see if it's, uh, you know. Well, I, I thought it would go in my benefit by leaving it open 30 more seconds, but no. It actually went higher for me, didn't it? <laughs> all right, I'm going to end the polling there. And then uh, we're ready to uh, jump into round two. Okay. So this is something that's really simple. But the first time I saw it, I thought, oh, this is kind of awesome here. And it's if you're using the Outlook client on either your Android or your iPhone. So what happens is you've got the Outlook client installed. You go ahead and click it and open it just like you would for checking your email. And then you can click in the lower... Uh, right corner, yeah, lower right corner, and it will show you your calendar. And it defaults to showing you today. So you can look at everything. You can see, you know, how long your meetings are, when they start, what they're doing. But what is really cool is merely by taking your phone that's in portrait mode and turning it sideways, it automatically adjusts and give you, gives you the week at a time or week at a glance view. And this is critical for me because a lot of times I, I think, okay, where are my gaps in the week? I want to just see an overall, where do I have time that I can block out for other things? This is perfect. And I don't have to, you know, go and click for various other options to get a sideways and then have to turn it and try to find it from there. This is just a really quick way to say, hey, turn my phone sideways. I have the week, turn it back. Uh, portrait wise and I have the day a you know, nice you know nice Tom, using the insights you know you don't have to go into wondered where do I have time it'll automatically tell you 
where you have time. But of course, the pair so party already voted, and they voted for you on the last one. So I guess that's irrelevant now. So when I when I use a feature like this, I really have to go out and see where do I have some of my important meetings at and how busy am I going to be today? Yeah. So this allows me to easily see where all my meetings are for the week and to figure out whether or not I can actually take a day off because I don't have very many things that can't be rescheduled. Is that better? Yeah, uh, I, you know, this was a, for those <laughs> of us in you know, IT for a long time, and we've never experienced this and, like, I don't know if I can say yes to that. I mean, I, I, I run into this where I, I went to the dentist a week ago and didn't take my phone in there with me. And so they oh, schedule your next appointment. Like, I don't know. I'm lost. I can't do it. Yeah. So I, let, me, let me go back. Let me get my, uh, my phone and, and uh, come back in and schedule it. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, that's it's a like great, really just to change that so you don't have to switch views. That's really convenient. Yeah. I mean, you just can go, you know, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, and bounce back and forth between today and the week. And that makes it really easy. Uh, so the next one is yet another to-do integration. I talked about this in the last couple months, uh, various capabilities. But the, one of the big announcements uh, in the last um, uh, month was the planner and to-do integration. So for, for those of you that are have a project management background, this has been something that kind of bothered me for many, many, many years about the Microsoft stack that you had uh, various uh, task management tools in Outlook tasks that were not aligned with to do. Of course, they bought a couple different uh, applications uh, for task uh, management. You've got your smart devices in task management. You've got your project lists. You have uh, the ability to build out lists of things to do in OneNote and push those things over to tasks in, uh, in Outlook. Um, but there was no integration between the actual project management task creation and management and any of these lists. Microsoft has come out and there's still a lot of work to be done, uh, but they are looking at aligning all of the task-based technologies and so this is a major piece here where planner and this uh, Kanban style list management task tool, which is becoming more and more popular. It's a great simple tool um, to, to give visibility to tasks, but now you have the ability to go in and add tasks, things that have been assigned to you or assigned to other people and for that to be integrated right into to do. And so it's making to do like on your mobile device, or in the desktop application, just a much more useful tool. Where to do has been, I'm like, Tom, do you use to do? Be honest. I no, I, I I am starting to use it more and more. I don't have a lot of my daily stuff, and I still kind of do a lot of my tasks based on Outlook because I have Outlook open. Right. But I also know that to do will pick up stuff from Planner and things like that. And I also rely upon that more in the mobile world than I do in the desktop. And so that's, I think that's the idea here is if you have to do integration across all of these various workflow, these workloads and these desktop applications, and yet you have then these gentle reminders, these lists that go to your personal devices, to your phone, and then you can set up automations around that to say, if you have to do items that are, you know, coming up that you can uh, send or set up reminders and notifications, make your phone buzz. Mm -hmm. uh, this stuff comes up. So there's a lot that you can do for personal productivity around this. But the fact that you now have the ability to go and, uh, and move those tasks from planner over to your to do and have that single view of, uh, of what's assigned to you across 10 different planner project plans. I mean, that is a huge step forward in that area. And a little over and above what Christian's showing right here is they were talking about this a lot at uh, the SharePoint conference last month. And what they're looking at doing now is not only having to do integration with like Planner and Outlook and you know, different things in the Microsoft ecosystem, but they're also looking at wanting to allow you to have tasks from third party things like maybe Slack or Salesforce or stuff like that be able to feed into uh, to do. And so 
Yep. When To Do first came out, I'm like, that's a throwaway. Well, and it's because they like, had just they acquired Wonderlist, and you're like, yeah. well, we didn't do anything with it. No, right? Yeah. So but this is I, it's becoming a more important tool, the tool set, but yeah. it all comes down to being this kind of task glue in between the different applications. Exactly. So it's it's very much it's like it's one of these watch this space. Exactly. Uh, very much so. Well, I've got the, the launch out there. I just realized that I had changed the header in this. For some reason, it didn't save. It's still saying November. But uh, so we've got vote, <laughs> voting is open. So right now it's at, oh, it's at 50-50. I've been ahead. What happened there? <sighs> the bias again. You're, you're, bum, bum, bum. Um, all right. So we're at, uh, so, oh, we're at the minute mark. I'm going to kill it there. So five, four, three, two, one. All right. All right, fifty six forty four. I I took one way from you, Tom. Okay, I'll All give right. you that one. Planner was cool. <laughs> yeah, that's a that, that is a cool one. All right, uh, so let's jump into round three. Round three. Uh, so here's one that is again for those of us that spend a lot of time in Word and creating <laughs> uh, documentation. It is uh, uh, you know Word, love it, hate it. Um, but they are doing so much around research tools. So all the AI-based tools, um, the, I, I, in fact, the, where I think I got the biggest oohs and ahs in Vegas was around some of the word, uh, the, the word capabilities. So around, uh, no, in fact, my son who is, uh, is a sophomore at, at uh, University of Utah, and I was showing him for research, and he's a STEM kid, so he's uh, he's in the Department of Atmospheric Sciences. He's going to be a meteorologist. We all said, "Oh, you're going to be a weatherman." He's like, "I'm not going to be a weatherman." <laughs> like, it's all physics and and math, and and uh, but I said, "But as far as writing, I said, are you aware of some of the new capabilities in Word?" And take a look at this, and was showing him some of the tips that I've shared over the last few months, and as far as adding citations and uh, and research and all that kind of stuff. Well, one of these really cool tools is uh, around acronym definitions. It's a, it's a pain. I know that internally we get into this, this style of writing where we all know what we're talking about when we you know, then list off a, a, a very complex and dense list of acronyms. And, and so what's nice about this is that you can essentially go and create a library of acronyms inside your organization so that you can make it really easy to uh, to draw from and see from and even then understand the definitions of acronyms as you're reading through content. Um, so very, very quick, useful thing, but if that's something if you're in, uh, I mean, we, we run into this problem all the, all the time in technology organizations. Tom, I'm sure in your world in healthcare, same thing. You've got acronyms everywhere where you have to have an associate's degree in it, in <laughs> acronyms, to understand just to be able to navigate sites and projects and, and organizations within your, that, those internal communities. Yeah, uh, I, can't, I can't tell you how many Lotus Notes and SharePoint sites I've built over the years that are basically dictionary sites for acronym stuff. So this looks really appealing. I've got to look into this one. Yeah, anything that you can do to automate that so that you can, there's a reason why you have the, the, the acronyms. It, it makes it so that really lengthy projects and uh, like uh, talking to my daughter about this and in, in, in her microbiology world and, and that side of healthcare, uh, you know, she'd write these papers. She asked me once to edit a paper. I'm like, I have no idea how to help <laughs> you. I can't read this. I don't know what you're talking about. And having something like this that can help decipher a lot of that complexity uh, will help with onboarding, you know, new employees who are trying to come up to speed and learn what things are. Um, but I like the whole, like the, 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 the action card type basis, the fact that you can not just see what it is, oh, there's the full name of it, but then click into it and get more information about what that project, that right. product, that service, that team, what that is. Yeah. So yeah, this is definitely something I would like to take a look at in our organization and see what we can do with it. So good stuff. Right. Over to you, Tom. Okay, let me share my screen here. And for my tip, <clears throat> the, 
this is something that for the longest time, I don't think I ever actually knew it was there. And that is the notes feature in Outlook. And that's not to be confused with Lotus Notes. These are little sticky notes. Um, so I've got a link here. Uh, if you download the slides and everything, you'll probably be able to click through that link. But Rob Woodgate had written an article on what are the notes in Outlook and how do you use them? So what it amounts to is instead of having to have sticky notes all over or having a um, notepad document somewhere where you have things you can copy and paste from, you can use this notes feature in Outlook, which you probably have open on a regular basis, to store this kind of information for easy reference. So all you have to do is on your side navigation where you have your inbox and stuff like that, if you go to the bottom, you're used to you know, the email icon, the calendar icon, people, and tasks, but I don't think I had really ever clicked on the ellipsis very much to check and see what was there. Well, if you do that, you see one of your options is notes. And so with the notes option, you come into here and you'll see these little yellow sticky notes that I had created. And I actually created these in the sticky note application in Windows 10, and it actually is interfacing with that and storing them. So that was really cool. And I also had notes that were just regular notes that I had stored somewhere in Outlook that showed up here. So my known traveler number when I you know, go somewhere and make an airline reservation, I need to know that number, but I can't ever remember it. So I just have it out here in Outlook, which is an easy way for me to get to it. And if I want to create a new note, all I do is click new note, obviously. It gives me a nice little, hey, this looks like a 3M sticky note. <laughs> and you can type in everything. And as you're typing, it's actually saved the sticky note for you. And it's titled it based on what the first part of the phrase is, or first part of the, the writing that you have here. So if you wanted to have a title, I'd recommend probably putting something here that looked very title-ish. And then maybe space down a couple lines and then start the text of what you have. I, I think the phrase is title-esque. Title-esque, there you go, title-esque. <laughs> um, so this is a really great way to have like little snippets that you may need to use in a lot of your emails, um, little messages that, you know, it's like, oh, I need to keep track of X, Y, and Z. So you can get out there, call up the OneNote, or call up the OneNote, call up the note, update the information on a daily basis, and you have easy reference to it without having to have three or four other applications. I think this is a highly underused feature in Outlook, but it can be really powerful. So check it out and see how it works for you, and let that kind of be a quick and easy data repository for things that you'll be using when you're in notes or when you're in Outlook. Kind yeah, of got is, notes on the head. <laughs> this is a, but another example I just made me think of the, the fact that you have kind of a duplicate type capability because you have the Windows 10, you know, the sticky notes is, is part of the, uh, you know, the inking tools or the ink workspace. And mm -hmm. um, you've got different apps that have been around for a few years around this. And it's all right. I mean, it, you use it in the place where it fits the way the style of, of your work habits. So yeah, because and, and to see that it actually had picked up some of my notes from um, before that I had done in the Windows 10 sticky note application. Mm -hmm. I thought, whoa, that's awesome because I have one there as I was trying to memorize my girlfriend's phone number. It's like, I will never remember that because I always just go to favorites and click it. Yeah. So that was like one of the lead off things on my notes was, this is so you'll see it on a regular basis and maybe eventually it'll sink into your head and you'll remember it, so. That's cool. I'll have to go and, and play. I've seen it. I've just, I've never used it. It's just, uh, uh, it's one of those things that I definitely want to go play with. And right. for those that didn't see, we do have the, uh, so the polls open. So um, yeah, you know, please, please uh, you know, either uh, Tom's the, the notes feature in Outlook or the acronyms guide within Word. Take a look at that and vote responsibly. Okay, so here's my insight one that I have to ditch because, you know, wah, Christian wah, took that wah, one. Wah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is yeah. a cool feature, though. Yeah. Yeah, it is a cool feature, so I will go past that one. Checking for gender inclusivity when using Word. This is one of those tips that I found when I was like, oh, man, I need to do a tip for work and... 
yeah, okay, I found this one. It seems like a throwaway tip. I have gotten more comments, thank yous, feedback on this one tip than any other tip I have ever written. It's been shared in numerous locations. People are like, oh my gosh, this is so wonderful. Thank you. I'm, okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> what happens is if you're old like me, you use the word policeman, fireman, mailman, stewardess. I don't use stewardess though. I finally did break that one. But uh, these are terms that in a earlier generation, they were thought of as normal. But now in today's generation and trying to be more gender inclusive with your phrasing and not have man behind everything when indeed it is not gender specific anymore, um, this is a way to allow word to take a look at what you've written and see any of these gender terms that you have out there that are tied to like fireman or postman or stuff like that and suggest that you change that to an alternative. So what you can do is you go into Word, go under Proofing and Options, then go down to the Writing Style with Grammar and Refinements because that's the kind of stuff that we're doing here. Click your Settings. Then within here, if you scroll down towards the bottom, there's this one option under Inclusive Language, Gender Specific Language. Just check that box. I think it's turned off by default. Click OK. And now all of a sudden when you start using terms that are not really appropriate for uh, jobs or positions or things like that that could have people in both genders, I use stewardess. It's going to tell me to either use steward or flight attendants because there's no gender association with those. Um, if you go and do, whoops. Oh, <laughs> there we go. If you do policeman, it's going to tell you, hey, why don't you try uh, police officer or postman becomes postal worker or mail carrier. In today's businesses, a lot of people are like, no, you have to avoid those references to gender specific jobs and roles if they are not truly gender specific. And so this kind of stuff allows you to have writing that's going to be much more appropriate at a corporate level. And it's a no brainer. Just go turn it on and it will let you know these things are out there. And all of a sudden your writing then becomes much more appropriate for both a business perspective and for a personal perspective, being more um, aware of the fact that I shouldn't be calling everybody who waits on me in an airplane a stewardess because I'll have stewards. They really should just be flight attendants. So I really like this idea. It's gotten a lot of feedback, a lot of kudos. I would highly recommend that you just go and turn it on because it's not going to cost you anything to do it and it's going to improve your writing. Yep. Yeah, that is a, I, I have it turned on. It's a, it, it is a no brainer just to, uh, to make that switch it's because look, sometimes I'll say that there either you have just, uh, you know, habits as you're writing something down fast, you're not thinking through the proper wording of something to be able to catch kind of those. The other thing is that, you know, with um, the autocorrect, um, might even place it without you noticing it, depending on, again, your, your writing style, where it, it populates with the incorrect uh, versions of words. And so for in, in, in either case, just having that you know, reminder, uh, it, it's as, about as simple as, as just having the, uh, you know, the, well, the autocorrect or at least identifying spelling errors and letting you make manual edits. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically checking your grammar and it's one thing to say, oh, you used IT apostrophe S instead of ITS. So there's grammar that is the appropriate usage of words, but then there's also grammar as in the appropriate use of words that you shouldn't be using. Um, that's what we're doing here. And like I said, I think it's a great Just because you can use the word doesn't mean doesn't you mean should. you should. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. So yep. This is one of those where, uh, as I kind of write in the intro here, is that where the way that we think about, uh, you know, who we're collaborating with, and, and it's not always just those that are within our organization. And I am often, I, in fact, I, I think I have LinkedIn. I don't have like the sales navigator tools. I'm not doing anything like that with LinkedIn. Uh, but I definitely have LinkedIn open most of the day. And because I, I leverage that to... Uh, uh, to, to be able to, to go and find out, you know, make sure that I have 
uh, especially when dealing with with Microsoft people like I do like there's constantly changing roles and titles and moving things around within the organization and just kind of keeping track on who's this person I'm talking to so I make sure that I address them refer to them reference them in an article or talk about them talk to them on a, a webinar that I get the title right it's it is Tomas correct <laughs> uh, okay yeah I'll go yeah. with that <laughs> uh, so anyway so what this is nice is that it, it is essentially is giving you an expanded view of your personal network into LinkedIn this is one of the benefits that comes from the acquisition of LinkedIn by Microsoft um, so that they can uh, it, it's some of the AI capabilities able to automatically go in they, it knows who you are and so based on your profile based on your network be able to populate um, your tools, your desktop tools, on that uh, based on that that uh, connection. So the ability to go in and co-author documents. So be able to go in and just say, hey, you know, I have this. I don't need to remember their email. I'm connected to them on LinkedIn. They've already approved that. They have to authorize that link, and now I can send this out. It basically extends that that gal, the uh, the, the the global. Uh, uh, you know, what is it, Gal? Again, what's the acronym? global global address Ac list? Okay. Access list. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the Gal, the directory, the company directory to everyone that's in that first degree of your network, so that you can go in and send this out. I just, I mean, this this just came up where I was scrambling to try and find somebody who used to be a peers at another another company. I wanted to share a draft of a document with, and get get his uh, input on it. And was trying to find his his email, and uh, and so you, I wouldn't have to do that with this capability. I could just pull this up. So, uh, you know, recent pain and saw this feature and thought that's exactly what I had expected to see. These kinds of features, this kind of automation, in the office experience based on this uh, AI capabilities on the integration with LinkedIn. I can. I was going to say I can see this being really critical for somebody like yourself, where you are. You know, your network is very important to you. Um, I'm, I'm a virtual on every a virtual employee on everything I work with. So I'm pretty much so. Yeah, I, I don't have a, a a single client in my state. So everything is a V team to me. Yeah, you know, for me and looking at our particular company, I know that there would be probably a fair degree of pushback on this because, you know the thought would be, I don't want to let everybody's LinkedIn people be showing up in our email. And you think, yeah. But it's just your know? view of it though. Yeah, I know. Uh, but I can just see where this would be a little bit more of a hard sell for us, but it's something that I would like to have because I've got people who I need to interact with, such as yourself, <laughs> that would be a lot easier if I could just say, oh, Christian Buckley, LinkedIn, boom, here's the email address and off you go, where now it's like I've got to use your email a couple times before it keeps popping up as a suggestion and I know I have it out there. So. Right. Well, and this is a, a you know, for, uh, I mean, certainly, you know, you can benefit from this using this kind of capability, like in your scenario with the things that you're doing at the community level. Right. So, right. You know, those, again, those people that you're not interacting with on a daily basis. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it would be interesting to go and look at and see at a tenant level um, whether you can disable this capability if there's if you're just more secure type environment. But because I believe it is, uh, and I'll check on this, but you know, it's just localized. It's it's you uh, that personal view. I think it's minimal impact on an organization. Um, it just uh, it, you know, it's either useful to you or not it's not something right. that really you need to go and lock down and worry about the security risks of because it's all you're doing is streamlining the process of you going and looking up that person's email with it which is you went to LinkedIn you're a first connection to them first here you click on their contact info there's their email so yeah. this is just cutting out that those additional clicks makes sense all right, going to end the polling. Uh, that was a 90-10 in your favor, Tom. Oh, <laughs> okay. 13. Oh, okay. Now, mine, now. mine was a good tip. Hey. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. Right. Uh, 
So I'm up three one. I'm I'm playing on house money now. Yes, you're doing doing well. Good, good yes, for you, good for you, Tom. I'm, I'm glad. Doing... I really like my extra tip. In fact, I almost considered moving this into the into the initial cycle. So I'm All looking right. forward to the last round. <laughs> round five. Let's see what's there. That one's gone. Oh, I yeah. like the trash the trash thing. That was cool. <laughs> All right. So here's one. It's kind of a simple thing. It's cool. I've already used it a couple times. Uh, well, I heard about this, used it um, for almost the exact scenario that, uh, that Microsoft's website outlines. Uh, this is using the new Windows 10 email app. So not Outlook, but the email app and sketching a, a message within oh. it. And so what's uh, nice about this uh, feature is that, so again, you go into Windows just down in the uh, in the Windows icon, bottom left corner, type mail, opens this up. I had this tied to my Hotmail account, um, which is not one that I use for a lot of things, but because it fit this need, it was perfect for what I needed to do. So I was using my Surface, so I had my, my Surface Pro and I had my pen, but you can use your mouse, you can use your finger uh, for a, a, a touch device if you have that. Um, but open up just a new email, and when you open that up, if it'll go forward, come on, open up that new, new email and you see up at the top along the panel, you've got the, um, uh, the drawing canvas. You can select that and gives you a bunch of options to go and create that. And so here in the uh, example there, which was doing like an office layout. So it's exactly what I was doing. So I was on site for this event tomorrow and I wanted to do, um, a, I took a couple pictures, but wanted to kind of draw a picture. There were hallways involved. I couldn't get a good picture to show the flow of the space. And so I drew this with my, with my um, finger. I didn't have my pen. I've since used it <laughs> the initial time. Used my finger, drew this out, uh, and then sent that over. So like, here's basically the flow of this. Tried to stay at scale. Um, but you know, what's nice about this, I mean, sometimes you want to just do this, send a quick sketch of something. And so now you have this way of doing that. Again, with the mouse, it's just, just as easy to go in there, use some of the drawing features, but to go in and um, sketch something out, send that type of message. So it's, you know, do you have multiple ways of doing this? Yeah, I mean, you can also use just your, like the, uh, the Windows Ink capabilities and draw something on the whiteboard and snap a picture and send that as attachment. There's multiple ways of doing that. But I love that they're creating these native capabilities just to give you, again, multiple ways of doing some of the same activities. This is kind of cool because <clears throat> for me, my work laptop doesn't have touch capability. And in fact, because I have it hooked up to two monitors, I don't even use the screen on my laptop. So this would not necessarily work for me in a corporate environment, but I've also got my personal laptop sitting here right to the side. I do have the uh, Windows 10 email application open. A lot of times I use it to, you know, hey, I've, I've got a link that I'm seeing in Twitter, which is running on my personal computer. So I can copy all that stuff, do a real quick email in the Windows 10 email app, which is hooked up to my Gmail account and then send it over to work. This would be really cool in the fact that my personal laptop is touch enabled. So I could do this exact same stuff, do sketches and then pop it over to where I need it to. So and of course you I can like also this. drop an image in there and then draw over that image True. where things are. And so True. there's a Make lot notations of on stuff. That. Yeah. So well, I could do a picture of Christian Buckley with a mustache. And all well, it, it, it just, <laughs> you could do that. Or I mean, <laughs> another example, like I could have taken those pictures and then gone on and drawn on, hey, this is where I see this and, uh, you know, nice. within those images as well. I like it. All right. Over to you. Okay. When I saw this, it's like, whoa, pff, mind exploded type thing. So in Excel, it's very common that you'll have a list of things in a column in Excel and then you go, hey, I want to sort these and you sort them and they all appear. That's great. But in Word, Word's kind of like unformatted text and you're like, okay, so I have a list of names here, but if I wanted to alphabetize them or sort them, wouldn't I have to like copy and paste and kind of do the whole thing manually? 
And the answer is no. Word will actually sort these lists for you, which is really cool. So in this particular case, I have five Disney names. And what I can do at this point is using the home tab down in paragraphs, you'll see the sort field. And what I do is I highlight the entire list that I want to have sorted. And when I click the little sort button, it then says, hey, how do you want to sort this? And it comes up with this option here. It's like I want to sort by paragraph. So when I go back here, you'll notice that there's these gaps between the names. That's because each one of these lines, since I did a, a line feed on them, they actually are like five paragraphs on my page. So when it's giving me the option to sort them, it's saying I want to sort by paragraphs and I want to do it in ascending order. And when I click OK, I now have a list of sorted names, which is like, wow, this is really cool. But wait, there's more. <laughs> The other thing you can do is let's say you have a set of first name, last name things here, and you're like, okay, this is great. I could do the same thing I just explained, but I would end up with things in first name order because it doesn't recognize that I have first, light, first name, last name things going on here. However, if I highlight them again, like we were doing before, and I do sort by paragraphs because each one of those is still a paragraph, if I click options instead of OK, it allows me to say, hey, you want additional sort options? So in this case, I say I want to separate my fields or basically the words out there if I want to treat each of those as a separate sortable thing. I want to separate them by spaces. So I just put a space in this other field and I've kind of highlighted it here so you can see that there really is something there. And when I click OK, what it then does is give you another sort text box, but now I want to say, I want to sort by word two. So if Sandra was word one, Mahan is word two, I'm sorting the paragraphs, but within those paragraphs, I'm sorting on the second word. So when I click OK, I now have a list of sorted names by last name. And this to me in word is like, oh my gosh, this is so awesomely easy because usually once the information's in Word, it's like I've either got to go out to Excel, put the stuff in Excel to sort it or things like that. Now I can do that from within Word. So I thought this was a really cool tip. Yeah, that is, you know, it, this, of course, as everyone knows, I mean, you're, if you have a long list, I mean, five names, not difficult to do, but when you're True. putting together a technical document and you have this, longer list of and you're having to then open up Excel go back and forth but this is a, I think another example of you know you have the ability to do this and you can do some of this kind of thing in, in one note of course in Excel and right. multiple places but when you're working in Word and need to be able to go in there and organize that data um, it, it's great to have a feature like this in place yeah I, I thought the being able to sort by the first letter of each line was cool. When I saw that you could actually sort by the second word, so you could do a last name sort like this, I was just like, whoa, this is really neat. I love this. So cool tip. What it also speaks to, again, what Microsoft is doing is, is breaking down you know, essentially all the data, all the individual line items, the artifacts that are within a Word document. It's just it's data. It's just a list. It's you know, it's just uh, unstructured, and and so you can go and to be able to do more, and and Word just becomes the, the presentation layer to this uh, grouping of of data behind it. It's uh, you know, it, it's cool to see these kinds of features. Yeah, and you you don't necessarily look at like the five names here and think, oh, each one of those lines can be treated as a data element. And each one of those words within the line can be treated as a separate data element. So all of a sudden you have fields mm -hmm. and paragraphs that if you turned on the, the paragraph symbols and stuff like that, you would see those. But when you look at this, you're just like, I just have words and spaces. Well, now you've got a lot more under the scenes and this is how you manipulate it. Grabbing back control over that. Who won the round, Tom? 81%. Congrats. Ooh. Yay, so me. One. So you, you, <laughs> You took the event. Finally, we're uh, tied again. Yes. We'll go and, uh, yeah, we'll add up all the stats and I'll update those for the slides. 
And uh, if you are available and interested, we'll be doing this all again at the end of July. And so you can go and register now for the uh, July jostle. We really had to work to come up with a J word for fights. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so that we, we have that happening. And then um, I'm thinking next time we'll, we're doing it live. You're not, are you not doing SharePoint Fest Seattle? Are you? Nope. Not doing any event there. Uh, if you happen to come visit Minneapolis again in October, I we may be out there with, uh, with the first grandchild being born in August. I may be out there a couple more times this year. Sweet. So if that's the case, we'll do, we'll do live at Twin Cities if they accept us. That'd be awesome. And for, of course, just to close out, uh, you know, please, uh, please go. And uh, thanks for the congrats uh, on, on the baby. Yes, I, I didn't do much as a grandfather. I'm just, uh, <laughs> uh, just kind of standing and, and uh, making sure that uh, my son-in-law um, – treats my daughter right but uh no <laughs> if, if you, you want to follow along the tips of course our blogs buckleyplanet.com uh and one minute office magic and um and then we'll we've got july and we'll we'll probably be doing uh almost every month for the rest of the year so i think so yeah yeah excellent well tom cool. thanks a lot Thank you very much, Christian. As always, had a great time doing this. And uh, to all my pe pe uh, peeps, thank you so very much. I'm yes. glad you voted ethically. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. I'll have to normalize this data. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's normal. Don't worry about it. It's normal. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, everybody. And we'll uh, let everybody get back to their normal viewing schedule. Talk to you later. Bye, everyone.